Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is our devotional for April 7th, Lily's birthday. Uh, but for April, we are going to start a series on the resurrection. And, you know, in our Sunday morning services, we're going to go back to looking at the Sermon on the Mount. But for the Wednesday devotionals, I thought it would be cool to continue in 1 Corinthians 15 and study the rest of the chapter for what it teaches us about the resurrection life. Because uh, you may not know this or you may not remember it, but the season of Easter lasts for 40 days. And so we want to you know, live into our uh, resurrected life with Jesus that he's made possible because of Easter. It's not just one day. Um, so let's, uh, let's continue. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 28. But, but if it is preached that Christ has not been raised from the dead, how can some of you say, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this, not, that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. This is an incredible chapter of scripture, and we're going to take three more weeks to uh, to look at it, you know, the subsequent verses. But it is uh, an incredible comfort for us to know that Christ has indeed been raised from the dead and that those who uh, belong to him will also be raised from the dead. Um, Paul was writing to this church because some were questioning whether Christ had actually been raised from the dead and, and what this would look like. But I think it really teaches us, uh, it teaches us three things. Uh, first, it teaches us that we are united with Christ, you know, that we are the first fruits. It says that in verse 20, and I even mentioned that in my sermon this week. But we are, we're united with Christ. Um, he is the first part of the harvest, and we are the next part. Um, so we see in Christ's resurrected body what what our future is, uh, that our bodies too will be resurrected and will not be able to perish, spoil, or, or fade. Uh, second, his resurrection, it, it speaks to every human need. Uh, you know, Paul talks here about, you know, if we feel, um, you know, ridden with guilt, if we feel guilty, well, no more. We don't need to because Christ has overcome sin through his death on the cross and through the resurrection. Are you afraid of death or really afraid of, of anything else? You don't need to be, you know, no more because Christ has conquered death. The death of death was the resurrection and we do not need to go through our life afraid afraid of, um, of the end, afraid of what other people think of us, afraid of running out of money, afraid of you know, broken relationships. The resurrection can take away our fears. Uh, third, 
Jesus fulfills um, what God intended for humanity. Uh, there was a, a book that I read a few years ago called New Way to Be Human by Charlie Peacock. And it shows how you know Jesus is what God intended for human beings, the way that he lived, the way that he loved, the way that he healed. That is what God wants for human beings. And Jesus has complete power over death. Uh, verses 20 to 26 say that. And Jesus is coming back to completely bring in the kingdom. Verse 24 speaks to that. And that all things will be under you know, the feet of, of Jesus. So it's a wonderful passage. Um, you know, read it, study it, reflect on it. Don't define yourself by this life, by the things of this world. You know, have what, I, what I'm calling a resurrection perspective. Have a resurrection perspective that God is going to raise you from the dead and give you a new uh, body that uh, can forever worship him. How does that change everything that we're going through now? Uh, well, I mean, for me, it's, uh, it really comes back to Romans 8.18. You know, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that is to come. Um, sit with that truth today, my friends. Dwell in it. And uh, happy Easter. Remember the resurrection and what Christ has done for you. Amen.